Good evening, everyone. Very warm welcome to this evening on behalf of Media and Entertainment Skills Council. This is Pooja Arora welcoming you all on the Creative Warrior Workshop powered by Vidya Dan in association with Global Media Education Council. Yes, GMEC, this is, we are inaugurating today a series with GMEC and I'm sure you all are going to love it. To introduce about GMEC and before we move ahead with the session today, I'd like to invite Mr. Ambrish Saxena ji. Dr. Ambrish Saxena is media educator, researcher, a journalist, and an anchor. And of course, he is a part of GMEC. Ambrish, sir, most welcome on this portal of Media and Entertainment Skills Council. Uh, uh, thank you, Pooja Arora. So it is indeed a matter of great pleasure that we are starting this uh, series today. And uh, it's a completely a new kind of concept uh, wherein we have collaborated uh, with the Media and Entertainment Skills Council. When GMEC was born in the year 2021, the first thing that we did, we conducted the 75 days of sessions uh, wherein we invited uh, uh, media educators, not only from India, but from outside, from different countries of the world. And also it was like a congregation uh, wherein the, not only the media educators and researchers were there, also the media practitioners were there, the research scholars were there, paper presentations were also made, keynote addresses were made, and uh, on any day when the session was happening, it was more than two hours uh, of deliberations, and that proved to be a great success. And as the GMAC is uh, moving ahead uh, in this process, we are also launching our uh, formal membership drive. At the moment, more than 100 people are there in uh, GMAC who are contributing voluntarily uh, from India and outside. Our focus is uh, uh, more on Asia, but then from Europe and from the US, the scholars have been associated with us. And we have so many, uh, so many, so many things uh, to do that we are planning. And this is one of its kind, wherein because right from the beginning, we have been having a great association with the media and entertainment is Skills Council, and uh, I acknowledge uh, the, the contribution that has been made to this endeavor, to this uh, uh, association and collaboration to Mr. Mohit Soni, and also to Professor Ujjal Chaudhary. Ujjal Chaudhary ji has been the pioneer, or rather I should say the ideator behind this whole uh, venture wherein he thought that such kind of uh, organization should be set up. And then all senior people from media education industry, they joined hands with us, prominently Professor K.G. Suresh, who is the president of GMAC right from the beginning. He is the vice chancellor of Makhalal Chaturvedi National University of Journalism and Communication. Earlier, he was the director general in IMC. So he is a known name in media education. So he is there as president and with this, there are so many other people, senior people who are there in GMAC. And this is a, a different kind of endeavor wherein this whole series has been conceptualized to provide more and more information about media education, about various aspects of media education. And it is more informative in nature since the whole series is directed to his students. So the students know more and more as to what uh, media education is, what all uh, aspects of media education is there, what kind of education and training is provided by universities and colleges, so that more and more uh, aspirants come to media education, which will finally contribute towards enhancing the quality of media industry, which uh, in any case is the need of the hour. So uh, in uh, inaugural uh, session of this uh, series, uh, I welcome everybody, those who are there in this session. And uh, from uh, uh, MESC, we have uh, Pooja Arora with us, who is moderating this uh, session also. So I, I hand it over to Pooja Arora. Thank you so much, sir. I am sure this Association of Media, Entertainment and Skills Council along with GMEC will go a long way and together we will 
work towards the uh, betterment of the industry. So thank you, Amrisa. I'll take this privilege to, although Amrisa did my job, but I'll still take this privilege to introduce about the session today. It's about media literacy, need of the hour. Yes, using the power of information and communication to change the world. Media literacy is an extended conception of literacy that also encompasses the capacity to access and understand media messages, as well as to create, reflect, act upon the, based on the situation how important it is, like Amrish um, also mentioned, it's really important. So let's learn about the same from our eminent speaker today, Professor K.G. Sureshji. He's a senior journalist, columnist, educationist, socio-political commentator, and communication strategist. He is currently serving as a vice chancellor at Makhan Lal Chaturvedi National University of Journalism and Communication in Bhopal. He is also the president of Global Media Education Council. He is a recipient of the prestigious Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi Award for outstanding contribution to the journalism by the Kendriya Hindi Sansthan, Ministry of Education by Government of India. Recognizing his commitment to creating awareness on media literacy, the state government of Madhya Pradesh nominated him as a member of its COVID advisory committee, along with the Nobel laureate Kailash Satyarathi, G and leading doctors and headed by the chief minister. It's uh, really a pleasure to have Professor KG Suresh Ji with us. So we welcome you on the portal of Media and Entertainment Skills Council. Thank you so much, Pooja, uh, for that warm introduction. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor Amrish Saxena. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Amrish Saxena, Saxena is the secretary of our Global Media Education Council, one of the leading media educators in the country. And uh, uh, my gratitude to MESC for collaborating with the GMEC for this very unique, uh, you know, Vidyadan project, uh, you know, series uh, crafted by Creative Warriors. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, like our previous session, the GMAC 75, uh, you know, Azadika Amrit Mahotsav, uh, this too is going to be, uh, to going to set new benchmarks. Uh, we have a lot of great speakers lined up, uh, you know, in this Vidyadan series. And Vidyadan means, uh, you know, donating your knowledge, you know, and I think that uh, we have some very senior people who are contributing. And mostly this is targeted at, uh, you know, UG students. Um, and of course, there would be other students and scholars and faculty members. Uh, I'm sure that this would add to their, uh, you know, understanding of the various aspects of media. Uh, so uh, hats off to Mohit Soniji and his team. Uh, for taking this forward. And uh, now let me come to the topic of the day. Uh, and that is uh, media literacy need of the hour. Most of you are aware, but still, uh, uh, when you discuss it in public, there is a, uh, you know, little bit of misunderstanding uh, with regard to media literacy and media education. You know, how is it different? <laughs> So uh, let me begin with that difference uh, is that media education is for people who want to pursue a career in media. You know, uh, it's like understanding the basic law as against, you know, being a lawyer. So this, uh, this is uh, something that we need to uh, kind of uh, understand. Media education is uh, aimed at a career, whereas media literacy is for the common reader, for the common viewer, for the common listener, the common citizen of the country who should understand the dynamics of media. Again, there is a misconception that media literacy is for media students. No. Media literacy is for all students. 
It's not just for media students. Media literacy is about being how we can be more active participants in the democratic process. Uh, because media is the fourth pillar of democracy. And as the fourth pillar of media demo of democracy, you know, people should be aware of their right to communicate, uh, right to be informed. Uh, and this particularly comes, this Vidyadan session comes in the wake of the latest Supreme Court observations with regard to the role of the anchor in moderating debates as against inciting passions. What is the role of media? How to understand the role of media, both technologically and in terms of content. Now, there are two, media literacy has always been important, but two major developments. One, the fast, the revolutionary changes that have happened in media technology. Now, as a result of this, one, the usage of smartphones have gone up like never before. And two, the number of people who are engaged in the social media. India is among the topmost countries, both in terms of usage of social media as also usage of smartphones. They are not one and the same. It also means a lot because if you remember earlier when we used to talk about pornography, about terrorism, we used to look at only the cyber cafes. In fact, cyber cafes had to take police permission to operate. They had to keep a record on who is coming and who is not coming. That was the time when we used to use social media or digital media on desktops. You did not have the kind of connectivity, portability that you have today where every home is connected, every individual is connected. So the usage of the smartphone has created individual republics. Citizens have become individual republics, if I may use that term. Earlier, you had to go to a television station or a radio station to air, telecast your content. And subsequently, following the computer revolution, you had to go to the cyber cafe. But with the fast changing technology today, wherever in the world you are, in any corner of the world, in the urban areas, in the rural areas, you and your phone are sufficient to disseminate a lot of information. Now, that is the major change that has taken place. Now let us come to the challenges. So these are the great changes that have taken place. This is so far as technology is concerned. I wish to be a little more India specific because we are primarily catering to an Indian audience. Look at our literacy rate. I'm not talking about media literacy. I'm talking about the general literacy rate. Look at the kind of exposure our people, particularly in uh, rural semi-urban areas have. Their exposure to the world, their exposure to 
things in India, the level of education they have, their understanding of technology. It is not just about using the mobile phone, but the dynamics behind the mobile phone, the dynamics of the smart, smartphone, the dynamics of the social media, the dynamics of the digital media, the internet of things, the role of artificial intelligence, the role played by separatists, secessionist, terrorist organizations who have penetrated the internet, whom we refer to as the dark net, are our consumers, are they even aware? We recently had instances when students in some part of the country committed suicide because of cyber crimes, blackmail, cyber bullying, and most of them were trapped while using the social media. You have people being made to shell out a lot of money because they responded to a video call and then they were victimized. You have several such instances where very eminent people have also been blackmailed just because they responded to a video call. So in this era, when even you find even some leading journalists being vulnerable, you had an instance of how a cyber fraud happened on one of the leading journalists of an English TV channel in India who even quit her job in the belief that she has a very lucrative academic offer at hand. And we have seen how some senior journalists had become vulnerable to certain information shown through the YouTube and Twitter handles, which they shared. And later on, they had to apologize for sharing those old, faked, morphed, manipulated videos. Now, if this is happening to journalists, whom I consider as much more aware than the ordinary citizens, one can imagine what would be the plight of the common man. It is in this context. So the revolutionary changes in technology, which has resulted in the democratization of media. Now democratization in the sense that earlier you needed a middleman, if I may use that term, a via media, a platform which would vet, edit, filter the information and disseminate. As against the current scenario, where you will disseminate information without following the basics of journalism, of checking, cross-checking, verification, and cross-verification. And that is disseminated, often based on hearsay, rumors, gossip, And often these are used by vested interests, whether they be political, 
communal ideological fundamentalist proxy by your enemies as part of their proxy war as part of their psy war or psychological war we recently found how foreign based social media handles were trying to create divisions within the country by referring to one of our cricket players as a traitor fortunately the team responded promptly and rebutted that and stood by the whole country stood by that player and the nefarious designs of the conspirators you know could not gain much traction but every such moment is seized by these people to foment trouble to tear apart our fragile social fabric because of centuries of mutual suspicion doubt among different caste communities one insensitive post can inflame passions incite violence so on the one side there is no doubt that democratization has taken place issues which were hitherto considered insignificant by the so called mainstream media are now being highlighted in the social media but on the other you also feel that in the absence of due diligence editorial processes in place the the role of the gatekeeper being not just sidelined but being totally out of picture this is happening and the result is a constant flow of misinformation and disinformation misinformation which is primarily not done deliberately but as a result of ignorance and on the part of the journalists because they are not doing their homework properly they are not doing their checking cross checking verification cross verification properly they are not doing ground reporting properly as a result of that misinformation they may not be doing deliberately on the other hand you have disinformation and these are deliberately planted by vested interests with the whole idea of sabotaging economies societies and this is also you know being done the covid was a big game changer people were stuck in their homes and they had very little access to information and people were looking for all kinds of information and there was a carpet bombing of information on the social media on every issue under the sun many based on rumors hearsay gossip and these led to misunderstanding tensions within the society we have discussed this ad nauseum during the corona period how 
even educated people were resisting vaccination. How educated people were even resisting going to hospitals. How misinformation was leading to a lot of unwarranted crowds at railway stations and bus terminals and how these were turning into hot spots, COVID hot spots. People were taking all kinds of antibiotics and other stuff without proper consultations. People were in, in the peak of summer, they were consuming everything hot so much so that they were developing ulcers and other problems because they wanted to be immune. So what was happening is that, you know, this, uh, we were not only really becoming vectors to the virus, but we were also becoming vectors or the carriers to the information overload, which is which was also referred to even from the WHO Secretary General to the United Nations Secretary General as infodemic, which some said was far more dangerous than the pandemic itself. This had happened largely because our people were not trained enough to handle this kind of information, overload, overdose, They just could not differentiate, as I said, between a real picture and a morphed image, <laughs> a genuine video and a doctored video, a genuine audio from a manipulated audio. They just could not uh, distinguish. With the use of special effects, with the use of animation, a lot of things which many unreal things were made to look real. You see, uh, one aspect that I would like to highlight here is that when we are talking about infodemic or misinformation, disinformation, we generally talk about, you know, information which is incorrect. For me, it is not just about information which is correct. The information may be correct, but is it useful or is it damaging? That is also something that we need to understand when we pass on an information. For example, you may be showing a real picture when you are showing uh, the grocery stalls which are empty because people have bought stuff overnight. So you are showing a real picture, you know, that everything has been bought out. People have, everything has been sold out. People are just going crazy and buying up everything, stocking them up. Now, what it leads to is panic buying at exorbitant prices, at a huge loss to the consumer. He or she will go to any extent to buy it because they have seen on television, live television, they have seen on social media that Everything, people are just going and taking away everything. So this entire mindset of hoarding up things that everybody has taken, I was left out, let me also do it. 
how does an information about stocks not being available help in the long run is something we need to understand. So you have information that is true, but not helpful. For me in media literacy, you also need to understand this, that should I be a carrier, a vector for this kind of information also, which, is, which may sound very harmless. You know, when you say show statistics and say that so many people have died of, you know, uh, while uh, being in the hospital, what happens as, as, as a fallout, as a collateral effect, is that people start avoiding hospitals. Does such information help? So we should not become like we should not become vector for the virus, we should also not become vector for misinformation. That's very important. Now, that also calls for, in during Corona, we talked about social distancing. I think it also calls for social media distancing. That does not mean that you don't use the social media, but you use it rationally. You use it within limits. You are not there 24 into 7 into 365. So social media distancing along with social distancing is also equally important to keep away from a lot of fake content, a lot of information, misinformation, disinformation. Media literacy should not be confined to only these things. Is media literacy only about misinformation and disinformation? In fact, now, there are questions being raised on, on the, the appropriate terminology itself. For example, they say that how can something be a fake news? News is a processed product. It is an information which has been checked, cross-checked, verified, cross-verified. Then only after following all the rules of the game, it gets converted into a news, then how can it be fake? Similarly, when you use the term fact checking, when it is a fact, what is there to be checked? If it is a fact, it need not be checked because we are putting no more, we are talking about truth in media because truth can differ from person to person. Somebody who has been at the receiving end of the social ladder <laughs> has a different perspective of life. Whereas somebody who was born and brought up in an affluent background will have a different perspective of life. So there's nothing called truth. They are only perspectives. But there is something called fact. So fact is sacred. Now that fact, when you talk about fact checking, so do you check facts? The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. That's a fact. Now there is no need for checking that fact. So it's basically an info check, not a fact check. Now these are, you know, debates going on and on, which we need to discuss, but by and large, we need to understand media literacy is also about understanding the dynamics of the media. So one is the content part. The another is what is media all about? What are the processes in media? What is the economy of the media? Who is managing the media? What is cross media ownership? What is 
मीडिया डाइवर्सिटी और मीडिया प्लूरलिज्म is the media representing that those ethos those values those constitutional provisions that is also media literacy so often i have seen that the debate around media literacy finally goes around just fake information disinformation misinformation no media literacy is about understanding it's like a film appreciation course where you understand how what all goes into the making of a film similarly what all goes into the making of news what all goes into the making of a media house only once the people have that understanding of the processes of news the monopoly is in news the dynamics of news the big media houses versus the smaller media the alternative media you need to understand all those aspects only then you can be media literate if you are still carried away by the propaganda put out by certain sections of the media then your understanding of media is not up to the mark media what does it mean when you know a media house is pursuing a certain policy when a corporate is running a certain media when people are paying for media what is the difference between a subscriber driven media or a subscription driven media a circulation driven media and an advertisement run driven media how does it impact content how does it impact the editorial line these are also part and parcel of media literacy now media literacy cannot be the same for everybody media literacy has to have certain gradations a level b level c level as you go up so we need media literacy right from the primary school level as part of the school curriculum where the children like when we teach are both boys and girl child about good touch and bad touch you know sex education as it is called media literacy is to begin with about good media bad media what you should not look at how you know uh media access to children so that they are not blackmailed they are not bullied it can right begin from there to the higher level where you understand how the global media operates what is the information order like how it is skewed vis-a-vis -vis the developing south it can be as vast you know a, a, so a media education does not so to say that oh that's for media education uh, people pursuing media education no that is important for media education perhaps a reporter on his day to day life doesn't have to understand as much as a consumer has to understand what it means why is it that a certain reporting is done by the transnationals in a particular way and by certain channels in a particular way you know we in india used to refer to west asia as middle east for a long time because the western media used to use middle east for us it is west asia it's not middle east for us for us east is this side you know indonesia thailand southeast asia 
So we need to understand that. We have to look at the globe from our own perspective and the perspective of the developing countries. Again, these are part of the higher level of media literacy. So media literacy has to start right from, you know, the kindergarten, if I may say, and it has to go up to the PG and PhD level. So it has to be an integral part of our curriculum, an integral part of our lives, so that we look beyond the headlines. We are able to understand, we are able to read between the lines. If media education is about writing those lines, media literacy is about understanding between the lines. This is a topic which is very close to my heart. I can speak for hours. But what I was told by Manushri, our GMEC coordinator, is that we have about 40 minutes. And I think that's what Puja had also told me at the outset. And if there are questions, I would love to answer. But once again, uh, you know, uh, greetings to both GMEC and the uh, Media Entertainment Skills Council for making this happen. I'm sure that as it picks up over the next few days, we will be able to engage more youngsters, young faculty members, young students, the future of media. And we need to reach out with these kind of sessions to all those, you know, who are not related directly to media also, because Media is too important a subject to be left to media persons alone. You know, it should involve the readers, the viewers, the listeners, in fact, every citizen of this country. On that note, thank you so much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, sir. It's uh, really wonderful. Your intense knowledge that you have shared about media literacy whatever questions were coming to my mind you were answering them uh, you know on the go and it was really a wonderful feeling and uh, listening to the media literacy uh, although i have received a couple of questions here i'll be asking uh, most of them you have answered uh, on the go but uh, would really like to know how important it is for the media professionals as a journalist and media professionals to keep the authenticity of the news? I think it, it is perhaps the most important part because it's about the credibility of the media. If you play with the authenticity of the news, if you tend to fiddle with its authenticity, I think that initially you may grab a few headlines and grab a few eyeballs also. But in the long run, it is going to impact your credibility. And I think a media is alive, media house is alive, a media platform is alive so long as the credibility is there. Once the credibility goes, I think that it is, you know, almost a death for a media person or a media, because the moment they start, uh, you know, uh, the reader or the, uh, viewer starts questioning not what you have written but why you have written uh, from what to why i think that you know that is a huge loss of credibility so i think that's very important because the credibility of the media is important you know in the larger interest of democracy uh, because when nothing works when the there is a apparent failure on the part of the legislature the executive and even the judiciary, it is the media, the first port of call for the citizens, that we should call up the media and tell them that things are going wrong. That is about credibility. That's about trust. And I think that trust has to be maintained. Yes, the trust has to be maintained. And this is not just for the professionals, but for the consumers also, before they forward the messages, before they, uh, you know, pass on one information to 10 other people, and then from 10 going to 1000, it's really important to understand the authenticity of the news. So 
as you have also mentioned about media being a part of education and coming from the primary education do you think different kind of medias should be added inculcated in school uh, colleges university even if the person is not going for a journalism or specific course in media like a career in media absolutely media literacy has to be there even in science i mean for a science stream student he should understand science communication you know media literacy is important for everybody for an economics student how you know uh, economics is being reported in media so as i said that it there cannot be a single uniform pattern for the media literacy media literacy is something that needs to be a lot of work is still to be done it is i think uh, it is a process which is still in the making we have to you know work on it media educators have to work on it institutions like gmec and mesc have to come together to work on it and to impart it even in uh, regional languages because that's where majority of our students are they need to understand because the technology is fast reaching whether you reach them or not technology is going to reach them so before they become vulnerable before they become susceptible because the, before they become victims you have to reach them because prevention is better than cure so before they make mistakes let us reach them and try to educate them about media very well said so before prevention is always better than cure and before some fake or something uh, negative goes around us it's better to teach our youth it's, it's better to uh, have everybody literate about uh, media and communication it's the important part of life so i'll take one last message from you what do you think will be the benefit if everybody understands their responsibility towards media and towards communication well obviously it is going to i can assure you that you know uh it's going to be a, the world is going to be a different place you know it's all about communication you know if if the consumer is aware of his rights you know nobody can cheat him uh if they are aware of their uh rights as citizens the right to information nobody will dare to you know kind of uh, divert them we need to understand that an, an only an enlightened citizen is an empowered citizen so the media which today indulges in speculation in rumor mongering uh in uh, sensationalization would avoid it once they realize that their audience is very mature audience which understands you know so long as they don't do it you know so you cannot be passive uh information consumers for i always say that for a great democracy you need to have a very enlightened electorate similarly for a very effective and impactful media you need enlightened readers enlightened viewers and enlightened listeners if you are passive consumers media you know media will continue to be wagging the tail it should be leading not following the media has to be the leader and not the follower 
very well said sir really media has to be a leader and not the follower so consumption of correct information and spreading the correct information is the core to uh, a great future and of course understanding uh, your rights is really important when the the uh, presenter and the consumer when they both understand their responsibilities and the rights then where the new nation and the new world will arise so with this sir uh, thank you so much for your time today it was really wonderful an inaugural session with gmec really wonderful to have you uh, sir really wonderful to have you saksena sir also and uh, we have been talking about media and taking this word forward tomorrow we are meeting dr Tab tabina anjum and we'll be dissecting long form journalism the journey from pitch to reportage i am sure during that session we'll learn a lot more about journalism now so for now for today i wish to thank gmec and uh, kg suresh sir um, reset sena sir for your time thank you team for the support we'll definitely meet you tomorrow 7 pm so be ready and yes till then take rest take care and yes keep uh, enjoying and celebrating azadi ka amrit mahotsav thank you so much